Okay, hello everybody. So here we are in level 52 of the LearnOpenGL.com book. Um, we're reading through the level on games, the 2D game for Breakout. Where we last left off, they had set it up so that you had a, um, a render game object class thing, whatever. <laughs> and it just produces the sprite and it puts it on the screen, rotates it, colors it green, all that fun stuff. So. It's getting pretty interesting, and from there is where we begin. Okay, so Breakout is unfortunately not just about a single sprite green on the screen. <coughs> Excuse me, contains complete levels with a lot of playfully colored bricks, uh, yada yada yada. In this tutorial, we'll briefly walk through the code of a game level object that is used to manage a large amount of bricks. We first have to define what an actual brick is, though. We create a component called a game object that acts as a base representation of an object inside the game. Such a game object holds state data like position, size, and velocity. It holds a color, a rotation component, whether it is solid or destroyed, and it also stores a 2D texture variable as its sprite. Okay. Each object in the game is represented as a game object, or a derivative of this class. You can find the code of the game object class below. Okay, so we're going to look at it. Here's the header. Okay, this is a really small file. This has position, size, velocity, color, rotation, is solid, is destroyed. Those are Boolean, so it's either true or false, texture 2D, sprite. Um, that's another class that's defined in the texture.h game object game object. This is the constructor position size sprite color velocity and that looks like default values okay and then draw okay so let's look at the code game object game object all this position size velocity color rotation sprite is destroyed is solid okay. Those look like default values. Default values. Draw renderer dot draw sprite. This sprite, this position, this size, this rotation, this color. So the sprite is just yeah the texture two D. Okay. So let's go and look at because that don't I have that in here? Game dot h. So does this go? in the game.h let me see let me see I'm confused game object ah uh -huh. see it changes so where does this go game state class game okay so what is this class game object so this is a whole different yeah uh. okay so include game object dot h okay so this is game object dot cpp um, what are we calling these is it does it say it doesn't say what we're calling the files all right <coughs> so we're just gonna go here add new item just going to add a header file and we're going to call it gameobject.h. -da 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 -da. And then what we want to do is take this code, copy it in there. Should I leave that? I don't know. Okay, save it. Excuse me, Woo, what the heck happened? All right, we got to put in glue here. I guess we're doing it wrong, so let's put it right. Uh, GL. Oh. <laughs> 
Excuse me, that's number two. All right. Okay, game object dot h, and then we need to go down here. Getting complicated now. We're gonna add a CPP file game object. CPP. Okay, add that. There we are. Go into here. This code is part of breakout. <laughs> okay, so that allows us to do this whole game object thing, which is really cool. So we just created the class. Okay, ooh, bright colors. A level in Breakout basically consists entirely of bricks. So we can represent a level by exactly that, a collection of bricks. Um, because a brick requires almost <clears throat> excuse me, all the same state as a game object, we're going to represent each brick of the level as a game object. The layout of the game level class then looks as follows. Game level. Vector bricks. I like vectors. Those are awesome. Game level. Load file. Level width. Level high. Draw. Sprite renderer. Renderer is completed. Check if it's completed. Initialize level from tile data. Void init. Vector. So another vector, unit, tile data, level width, level height. Okay, since a level is loaded from an external text file, we need to propose some kind of level structure. Below is an example of what a game level might look like in a text file. Really? <laughs> Looks weird to me, but cool. Here's a level. A level is stored in a matrix-like structure where each number represents a type of brick, each one separated by a space within the level code we could assign what each number represents. Okay. We have chosen the following representation. Zero, no brick. Empty space. One solid brick. Brick can be destroyed. Number higher than one, a destroyable brick. A destroyable brick, uh, each number only differs in color. Oh, so a solid brick that cannot be destroyed. And then all the destroyable ones. Okay. The example level listed above would, after being processed by game level, look like this. Huh? <clears throat> the game level class uses two functions to generate a level from the file. It first loads all the numbers in the two-dimensional vector within its load function and processes those numbers to create all game objects in an init function. Okay. The loaded tile data is then passed to the game level as an init function. Okay, so this brick's clear. Title code, tile code, level, string line, if stream, if stream file, vector, glue in tile data. So what is this? It's a vector within a vector? That sounds interesting. If stream all get line if stream line is stream line vector row if stream is greater than tile code read each word separated by spaces row pushback tile code tile data pushback row tile data size greater than zero in it tile data level with height the tile data is then pushed to the game levels init function tile data right here, init. Oh, right here, okay. So then it uses a std vector, glue init, tile data, level width, level height. Height equals tile data size, width equals tile data zero size, all that, okay. Width equals width divided by static cast flow width. Boom, whatever that is. Unit height, okay, static cast, and the title that. Y, X, check block type from level that tile data. So it's a mul just a multi-dimensional array is what that is. I don't like how that doesn't highlight it for me, but that's okay. So this uh, declaration up here is apparently just a multi... Huh, okay. Just a multi-dimensional array, which is funky looking. All right. Um, back to where we were. So, if tile data equals one solid, GLM vec two position size, object position size, resource manager get texture block solid. Get texture block solid, huh? So we have to load that. Is solid equal true? Bricks push back OBJ. Huh? Okay. Game object position size texture. Okay, cool. If 
tile data is greater than one. It's breakable. Ba -da 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 -da. Original white tile data two. Two, three, four, five. Oh, so this is setting the color. Vector two position size, pushback position size, versus matter and color. Oh, so it sends the color in. Okay, I missed that up here too, which it does it right there with the vector three, eight, eight, seven. Okay, the init function iterates through each of the loaded numbers and adds a game object to the level's bricks vector based on the process number. The size of each brick is automatically calculated within high based on the total number of bricks so that each brick perfectly fits within the screen bounds. Size, unit width, unit height, position, unit width, unit height. Unit width and height, oh, level width divided by static cast flow width. Uh, level height divided by height. Tile data size, tile data zero size. Oh, using the multiple. Oh, that's cool. Now I get how that works. <clears throat> so the height is right here, tile data size. The width is right here, tile data zero size. Uh, that's cool. Very cool. Um, here we load the game objects with two new textures, namely a block texture and a solid block texture. A nice little trick here is that these textures are completely in grayscale. The effect is that we can neatly manipulate their colors within the game code by multiplying their grayscale colors with a defined color vector, exactly as we did within the sprite renderer. This way, customizing the appearance of their colors doesn't look too weird or unbalanced. The game level class also houses a few other functions like rendering all non-destroyed bricks or validating if all non-solid bricks are destroyed. You can find the source code of the game level class below. The game level class gives us a lot of flexibility since any amount of rows and columns are supported and a user could easily create his or her own levels by modifying the level files. So, really, I'm skeptical. Game level, another class. <laughs> it's creating, they're creating another class. It's crazy. So we got all this. We got a game object. We got a game. We got a resource manager, shader, sprite render, texture. Time for game level, kids. Here we go. Add new <laughs> game level dot h. Boom. Okay. The game level dot h is right here. And I'm just going to copy it in after this pragma once thing. There we go. And then we go down here, game level, add new item, CPP, game, and we're going to copy the code, crazy man, what's it doing, uh, of course, it's still wrong there, all right, what's the error here, game object, that will probably compile game object, game object. So, yeah. So, what are they saying here? Okay, so hold on, someone's calling me. I gotta do a part two.